everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here my name is Rachel and today I'm going to be talking all about new makeup releases and whether or not I find them interesting and whether or not I would consider adding them to my collection. I love videos like this I find them exciting to um, film it's been a good long time since I've done something like this I mean I know I've just done a video about five eyeshadow palettes that I like the look of that I want to buy but it's been a long time since I've actually evaluated the new makeup releases coming up and whether I would be interested in buying them or not I didn't do them so much during my year-long no buy because it was just too much temptation you know looking at the new makeup and deciding if I like the look of it and it was just too much sort of free reign to have opinions about the new makeup and it would have led to me wanting to buy it and I just felt it was safer not to do it but I'm not on a no buy anymore and I have started looking at new makeup I am interested in adding some new makeup to my collection because my collection is getting really quite small and I like it being small but it's getting a little bit restrictive now and I kind of I've got my creative juices flowing and I want to add more colour to my collection and more you know just more interest so that is what we're doing today and I've got all of the um, the products on my iPad so if I'm looking down it will be because I am looking at the products that I'm going to be talking about so the first thing that I've got on my list is the Coloured Rain Juicy Boost palette and I was supposed to film this video last week so obviously some of these releases won't be as new and exciting now because they've been out for a little while but I still wanted to do the video because there's quite a few things in here that I am interested in and there's quite a few that I'm not. And the reason I mentioned that I was supposed to film this video last week is because with this product I have now seen um, a couple of video reviews on it. I've seen the video review of Katie Marie and of Alejandra Lissette and both of them were not the most complimentary you know reviews in the world I mean neither of them trashed the palette but it wasn't as amazing as I was maybe expecting it to be and they weren't as blown away by it as I thought they might be and they both mentioned that they thought that the coloured rain um, formula had changed versus what it is normally and what it was like for the much beloved Queen of Hearts now I've never tried coloured rain shadows so I've got no way of knowing if the formula has changed I would have just thought it was bad if I didn't like it I wouldn't have necessarily known that it was different to the usual but both of their reviews kind of put me off I was initially very very interested in this palette because I like the colour story and I do want to add a lot more colour to my collection because my collection is very very neutral heavy and you know today's look aside this is from the Jaclyn Hill palette um, but today's look aside I've got very very little by way of colourful shadows within my collection and I do want to add more colourful shadows to my collection and one of the ones that I was interested in was this palette but given how expensive it is given that it's not blown these ladies away I don't want to waste my money there are other shadow palettes out there with really really bright colored um color stories that i can look for instead so it's not like it's something massively massively innovative so with this one i'm going to defer to their experiences with the palette and i'm not going to try it out for myself because there are safer bets i think out there and i don't want to just bring things into my collection that i ultimately will not use because i don't like the formula especially when i've seen um you know multiple reviews saying that it's not amazing compared to how it should be usually so the next uh, products are the Natasha Denona chromium liquid eyeshadows um, I don't know if these actually are even new out or if they're just new shades because like I say I wasn't following new makeup releases for such a long time that I'm kind of out of touch with them I think it is a brand new product I've never seen them before but again like I've just said that doesn't mean anything I like the look of these but I am going to pass on them I know myself very well and I don't tend to use liquid eyeshadows very often at all I can probably count on one hand the amount of times that I've used one I think I have one by either wet and wild or 
it, it's a drugstore brand anyway I, I did have one and I think I decluttered it because I didn't use it very often I like the way they look I just find them more difficult to work with and you know I think it's a lot of money to spend on these I think are they like 24 pounds each or something and that's a lot of money to spend on one color that I'm probably not going to use very often I would rather spend that money on like a glitter or a pigment or something and I can get this sort of effect by pigments a lot lot cheaper than that and you know really really enjoy where I've got so I'm going to pass on these although the colours are really truly beautiful they've got a gorgeous shift to them I'm just pricing myself out of it I, I don't think they're worth it by looking at them the next product I am so on the fence with this because I am so interested in it but I know that it's probably going to be a waste of money for me. It is the Arthurine Blush Palette from Menagerie Cosmetics. It's got the most adorable pack packaging. I am such a big teddy bear fan, like teddy bears, I love them so so much. Um, and it gives me teddy bear vibes all over the place. It is a bear on the palette. It's got flowers around its ear. It's it's eating a flower. It's just like cuteness personified. And I really think that the packaging is gorgeous. But if I'm honest with myself and I really, really think about it, there is not much chance that I'm gonna use all nine of the shades within this palette. I mean, that central red shade is so red. It's like pillar box red. I mean, I don't know if it would show up that way on the skin or if it would be very, very buildable. I would like to think that it's buildable. And then that way it works for both lighter skinned people and darker skinned people because you can put on as much as you need and that's it. It is a beautiful array, but if you didn't know this was a blush palette, I think you'd look at it and think it's an eyeshadow palette. But if I'm honest with myself, I would probably use about three of the shades out of the palette I'd probably use the top left the bottom right and the bottom middle shades those are the ones that I would probably reach for the very most and I probably wouldn't use the rest very much at all I mean I suppose given that they're quite colorful if they do pack a punch with the pigment they could be used as eyeshadows but it'd take you forever to use those up so I'm kind of really really on the fence with this I, I love the look of it and I think it'd be an amazingly great quality product but if I'm truly honest with myself I don't think I'd use all of the colors within the palette and that would make it a bit of a waste of money really so I do definitely still want to try something by Menagerie Cosmetics I just don't think it'll be this then next we are on to the Jeffree Star O-R-G-Y palette and I'm not going to say it because family friendly here. I mean, I'm not a prude, but this, this is a bit much really, even for me. I mean, I'm not a prude, I'm, I'm not, but I'm not really, really open about that sort of stuff either. And this is just kind of, this is a bit too far for me, really. I mean, some of the shade names are a bit, you know, Eek. they would make me blush yeah I'm not ashamed to admit it so there are 30 shades within this palette 30 matte nudes I'm not interested in it at all because I don't support Jeffree Star um, and I haven't for a long long time and I usually wouldn't even mention his brand very much on my channel because there's really no need to but this is a big launch and it's a controversial launch and I was really interested to see how it would go actually given everything that he's caught up in and I am happy to say that it looks like he is suffering the consequences of his actions I mean, I'm, I'm gonna tread lightly here because I don't think that anybody deserves to be ruined. I don't think anybody deserves things to go so badly for them. I never wish misfortune on other people. I mean, I'm not that sort of person. I do believe in second chances. I believe in third chances. I believe in, you know, all the chances in the world, but there is a line that you've got to draw when people are showing a pattern of behavior and not showing any inclination in wanting to better themselves. I mean, we all make mistakes, of course. We all do things wrong. We all, we all mess up, we do. But 
this is beyond messing up at this stage for me. It's a pattern of behavior that has continued and hasn't changed at all. And I'm gonna get back to the palette because this video ain't about that and I'm starting to go off on a tangent. But this palette bores the living crap out of me and <laughs> it's not just because I don't need shades like this within my collection. I have probably most of, if not all of the shades within this palette within my collection already. It's the fact that there are no less than eight really creamy shades, you know, that you could use for setting your eye or wherever. It's just so same, same. And actually when I looked at this palette, I saw the picture of, have you ever seen those posts on Facebook where people show like 30 pictures of different slices of toast and each one is browned to a different degree? I'll put a picture on the um, screen, but this palette just reminds me of a toast chart or a cup of tea chart in the UK. We have a chart that has about 30 different cups of tea at different strengths. This palette just reminds me so much of that. And as a result, I don't feel like I can take it seriously because it just looks like a toast chart. I'm sure the quality is great. People always say that his, qual his quality of his eyeshadows is amazing, but it's, it's not an excuse for me. I don't care how great the quality is. I would rather support other brands and other businesses that operate in more ethical ways. I mean, as ethical as you can be when you're in business, obviously, but there is a balance that people can strike. And I think most companies can strike that balance quite easily. So he doesn't need my money. So passing on that one. Then the next one is, quite a similar product and I'm not gonna to spend too long on it because it is quite similar. And it is the Ofra Summer Edit Pro Palette. And it's got those sort of eyeshadows where you've got, you know, a little groove where you can just pop it out, pop it out of the palette and put it into like a magnetic palette or something. It looks like you can, you know, swap out the shades, etc. But this looks to be pre-filled and it's called the Summer Edit Pro. And it's just boring. It's just, it's just more same, same. I really don't feel like I need these colors. I feel like there's not a massive amount of variation between the shades and the palette. There's not enough difference in depth from light to dark. And I, I don't know. I just find it really boring looking and I will be passing on that one for the same reason. Next, we are on to face palettes and it's KKW X Allison Stata, I think. And it's the Tower Lane face palette that I really like. I can't remember which one of the two it is actually because I saved all of these about a week ago and I can't remember which one is which, but actually looking at both of the palettes, they are both very pretty. But I think the Tower Lane one is the one closest to the front on the picture that I'm gonna show you and it looks stunning. I mean, the bronzer looks light enough that it would be flattering on myself and not be too muddy. And the blush is that sort of pinky peachy vibe, sort of apricotty that I really, really love. And the highlighter just looks like molten metallic. It just looks gorgeous. I would hope that it'd be buildable though, because it does look like it'd be very, very blinding. And I do like my highlighters to be a bit more on the subtle side. But I really, really like the look of this face palette. I'm not sure that I would um, add it to my collection though. I don't really feel like I need a face palette in my life at the minute. I've got plenty of bronzers, plenty of blushes, plenty of highlighters to keep working my way through. So I don't feel like I need it, but I would seriously consider it if I did need something like that to add to my collection. It does look beautiful. And I think that the quality would be really great as well. I There's not really too much you can do wrong with a powder for me as long as you get the pigmentation correct. Next we're on to the Bite Beauty Millennial Pinks Mini Lip Crayon Set. This looks really really cute and I actually like the retractable you know lip pencil -y crayon type things. It's a bit like the Colourpop lippy sticks I suppose and I really really like those. I find them very convenient. They don't have a lot of product in them but I find them really really convenient because they're quite small and quite precise that I feel like it's really easy to do your lips on the go. You don't necessarily need a mirror or a lip liner. I find it's really easy to precisely apply them. 
And with the Colourpop lippy sticks, I really like the matte and is it satin that they've got as well. I don't like the matte X. I find that one really, really chalky, but the um, the matte, the original matte one is really, really nice. These look lovely, but I'm going to pass on them because there's not enough variation between the shades for me um to warrant buying all four of them and i think they come in a set of four within the tin the second shade and the fourth shade just look almost identical and i feel like they've missed a trick with this i think they could have played around with offering different finishes and offering different shades and different depths of pink and different undertones they had a world of pinks to choose from and they've chosen two in there that are nearly the same and it's just such a wasted opportunity and as a result I'm not really that interested in them. And then the last product that I'm going to talk about today is the one I'm really excited about actually and I know there's been a mixed reaction about this particular product. I did post it on my community tab. It is the Nikki Tutorials X Beauty Bay eyeshadow palette. I posted about it on my community tab and asked what you guys were feeling about it and a lot of you are not excited about it and I, I kind of get that. It is a strangely arranged colour story, you know, the, there's no rhyme or reason really to the way they are arranged except that Mikai is right in the middle to be the heart of the palette. Otherwise, it's kind of like, I don't know, like a boggle board, you know, the way you... um you shake up boggle and they just uh, land where they land it's kind of just like that and I get that that would be annoying for a lot of people for me I'm not really that bothered um it doesn't really bother me the way a palette is laid out I can kind of see past that um I love the, the colors in this palette though I do not have shades like pride that dual chrome like shift in the bottom left hand corner I don't have a bright, bright blue like that. I don't have a bright green like that. I don't have a bright red. I don't have an almost luminous green yellow. And when Nikki shows these shadows within different looks, it just made them look so, so stunning. And I am actually really excited about it and I do want to support her as well. For me, the price point on this is really really good it is so much cheaper than her Too Faced collab was it's much more accessible and the quality of Beauty Bay eyeshadows is said to be brilliant I've known of a load of people who have you know the large Beauty Bay palettes and that they are really good quality so I have really high hopes for this I am on the early access uh, list for this and I am seriously seriously considering buying it because I am so excited about it and there have been very very few eyeshadow palettes within the last couple of years that I've been legitimately excited about so that does tell me something about this there isn't too much crossover between this palette and what I already have in my collection I mean the shade in the top right hand corner that sort of you know you know makeup geek cocoa bear sort of shade now called cheetah bear but that sort of mid-tone very warm brown of course I have that within my collection already I do but there is very very little crossover between this palette and what I already have and I think that's part of the reason I'm so excited because I do want to add colour to my collection and this has lots of colour I'm really really enjoying it and I, just as an aside I do think it is inspired that she put a magnified mirror in there because there are a lot of people who obviously um, need that extra magnification maybe you wear glasses or anything who really really struggle to put their eye makeup on so I think that that is a really inspired idea so those are all my thoughts on the new releases I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about these let me know in the comment section down below I'm really really interested to see what all the different opinions are about these products because we are all so different and it is great hearing about everyone else's opinions so I'd love to hear what you have to say let me know and I hope you enjoyed this video I will see you in the next one bye guys